Brooks. <laughs> you don't like that, huh? There we go. This is something I probably should have done a while ago. Um, and I've been telling you guys that I wanted to write about it. And every time I've tried to write about it, I can't. It's the first time in my life I'm unable to convey something through writing. So obviously, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've noticed I've lost probably about uh, close to 40 pounds over the last year and that I've been really vaguely talking about health issues and that I've been posting old pictures of myself um, because I'm very uncomfortable with what I look like right now and I feel like I'm, you know, trapped in a body that's not mine. So. Um, there's a bunch of backstory, but before I get to the backstory, I'm just going to kind of basically explain what happened last year and then um, explain, I, we don't really, I'll get into it, I don't really, sorry, this is really hard for me. Um, so basically, we got home from South Africa about exactly a year ago, um, and when we got home, I was throwing up every night and I couldn't keep any of my food down. So obviously the immediate scare was that I caught something in Africa, so I called my GP, and by the time I had gotten in to see her, I had lost 10 pounds. So me losing 10 pounds at 165 pounds was not a big deal. I do fluctuate between you know 165, 155, um, and I also knew that it came off from lots of vomiting, diarrhea, stuff like that. So um, obviously that we did all like you know the blood work and the stool samples and all of that really gross stuff to rule out anything serious that I could have caught there. We ruled out parasites. Um, we did you know um, several tests. We retested uh, every you know we we cleared me for anything serious that I could have caught there. So once we had realized that there was that it was nothing I had caught in Africa, it was a little confusing because the coincidence coincidence of that was just strange <laughs> you get home from a foreign country and you get super super sick and then you find out it's not from being in that foreign country it's you know rare to wrap your head around so at that point in time my GP thought that it might be my gallbladder and I'm one of those people who I'm very like accepting of things right away and like I'm accepting of like the immediate thing and I tend, you know what I mean, how I am, <laughs> instead of like, let's get a second opinion. It's like, okay, this is it. And let's just, this is what it is. And let's just accept it and deal with it. Like, and I, I think that that has to do with me being an addict alcoholic, like the whole denial thing. I, I just tend to get a diagnosis and be like, all right, this is it. And like, we're just going to deal with it. And this is what it is. That's a, an exhausting way to be because as I was getting told, it was one thing after another for the entire year of 2017. I was just emotionally drained because I would think I'd have an answer about what was happening to my body and then I wouldn't. And then I would think I would have something and then I wouldn't have an answer. And so I emotionally destroyed myself over the course of the year having no idea what was happening to my body. So. Essentially, that's kind of what happened. And as we went down the list of things it could be, it was, you know, it was one thing being ruled out after another. Um, and around April, I think I looked at my GP and I said to her, do you think I could have celiac disease? <laughs> and um, I'm not afraid of gluten. I own a business called Donuts and Deadlifts. I don't demonize gluten. I have no issue eating it. Um, but the symptoms and the stuff I was going through, I, you know, like um, nausea, diarrhea, weight loss, um, irritability, vomiting. I was unable to keep food down. Um, my, my skin's never looked worse. Uh, and, you know, I, I ran that by her and she laughed at me and said that I didn't have celiac disease. So we kind of like kept going down the list of things. So basically, we never got an answer. And around June... Um, I made the very, very, very large mistake of giving up and assuming that I just had weird health issues going on and I kind of just like came to terms with the fact that sometimes if I ate certain foods I wouldn't be able to keep them down um, and I, you know I didn't really know what was happening to me and I stopped taking care of myself and kind of just stopped looking for answers because I wasn't getting any and I just stopped being proactive and so 
basically I just, you know, I kept losing weight. I kept having a harder and harder time keeping food down. Um, my sleep got worse and worse. I was, you know, throwing up daily several times a day and, it, you know, it got to the point where, um, I kind of just snapped. I wasn't, you know, I was malnourished. I was so skinny and that's about, I got on the scale one day and it said 121 pounds. And so, you know, as someone that walks around at 155, 160, I, I didn't even like know what to make of that. That's what I weighed when I used to use drugs. So, um, I, he basically was like, enough is enough, you dumb idiot. Like, let's do something. And we're not going to do this anymore. And you need to, you know, you need to make the right calls and you need to go see the right doctors because clearly the ones you have been seeing don't know what the fuck they're doing. So um, I started, I got on the phone with GI places around town and explained what I was going through and they were, you know, I needed a referral and I found out that my GP had moved. So I was unable to get a referral. And so um, I finally got a finally got a hold of somebody at GI Consultants who was willing to help me, and I explained what I was going through, and I I explained that I'm a competitive athlete who competes at 155 pounds, and it is abnormal for me to weigh anything below 145. I've I've tried to cut to that weight class, and I've been unable to, and. Um, Basically, I kind of just, I think they just heard the desperation in my voice and they helped me call my doc, my old doctor's office and get the referral. So I went in and it was, you know, it was, um, first thing he mentioned was celiac disease and, you know, we started, we started the testing for that. And so long story short, I, celiac disease was confirmed and I was in shock at what celiac disease could do to a person's body and I felt incredibly insensitive to the fact that I had gone my entire life thinking that you know celiac disease meant you're allergic to wheat um, it, not that it assault that wheat actually like assaults your body so a lot of things made sense and other things still didn't make sense so um, you know obviously I went did all the scopes and all of that type of stuff and the scope showed a lot of really small problems that um, weren't adding up to the big problem, you know, the extreme nausea, the 40 pounds of weight loss. Um, I, you know, I, there was, I was, I got put on Zofran in August, I think it was, and Zofran's what they give chemotherapy patients to deal with nausea, and there was mornings where I'd wake up so nauseous and I would just need to keep the Zofran down and I would throw the Zofran up and it's so expensive. <laughs> and I remember just wanting to pick it out of my puke so badly because I was just like, it was getting so expensive and I just like, I just wanted to not be sick anymore. Like I'd throw up the last one or something and I'd be like, are you kidding me? And you know, there was like so many of those mornings and so long story short, uh, you know, I, I, I thought celiac disease was the answer and I was kind of like, wow, this is fucked up that it did this to me because everybody else I, you know, talked to with extreme celiac disease, like went through really extreme symptoms, but they were so much different than mine. So I went back in to see my doctor and he, you know, we kept, he kept asking me questions and, uh, we went over, you know, like my, like my history of stuff and everything. And, um, Basically, the biggest concern through this entire thing is that all of the food I was throwing up, a lot of it was undigested, you know, from days before. And that was kind of like the main concern through all of this is that my food wasn't even digesting in my stomach. So um, that's when my doctor brought up gastroparesis and um, he pre-diagnosed me with gastroparesis and I had never even heard the term before. And so I left his office that day confused and I'm the type of person, I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. And so I like, I'm aware of that and it's something I'm aware of now, six or seven years ago, it was a really big issue. But so what I do is, is I don't um, investigate things anymore because I just tend to work myself up. So I, you know, talked to him about it and he started looking into it and um, basically that's, you know, how we learned about my disease. <laughs> and then I started, you know, doing more and more research and um, I saw, I 
sought out the help of Rob Wolf, who has been a huge help up until what happened recently. And, um, you know, it's not a common thing. Um, there's not a lot of medication for it yet. Um, there's studies for it. And basically, gastroparesis is just your stomach nerves or and or muscles are paralyzed so they no longer can work to break down the food in your stomach so you're very limited as to what you can eat um, fat vegetables and then on top of that i can't have gluten <laughs> so i can't have the, the easy digestible stuff so um and now we need to get into the backstory because i'm 29 years old and most people get diagnosed with celiac disease quite a bit younger. Um, so obviously, as I got these, as I got like these answers as to why I had been so sick for so long, it's like it seemed like it came out of nowhere. But the more I thought about it, it didn't because in July of 2016, I made the choice to be, for moral reasons, to become a vegan and that I no longer wanted to eat meat. And what that meant is I replaced uh, most of my meat, my meat sources with vegan meat sources, which are made out of gluten. So I went from eating minimal gluten, not because I demonized it, but I just, it just was, has never been a staple in my diet aside from donuts, um, to a diet consisting heavily of gluten. And so there's going to you can there's going to be people watching this who are unintelligent who want to say oh you you're a vegan who gave yourself celiac disease no it does not work that way like please don't be that person and understand that I had celiac disease prior to that it just it became more prevalent once my diet was very dominantly gluten and that's what kicked it into high gear and it was months before we went to South Africa and when I'm when we were first hanging out I, would, when I was like really new to being vegan and I was eating all these vegan patties and I was constantly complaining about my stomach all the time that my food felt like it was never digesting and all this stuff and so like the reason it, it took till me being 29 for us to notice it is because I went from you know eating fish and meat and all that stuff to not to replacing all of that with gluten and so that is why my body basically shut the fuck down <laughs> well even when we first started hanging out um there were i think there were gastroparesis tendencies there as well mm -hmm. um you know like peanuts the thing with gastroparesis is high fiber and high fat foods i guess are big triggers for the stomach to just not empty so you know there's like trail mix and peanuts and peanut butter and stuff like that had a real, just real all hard I hate. Time. yeah but you had a real hard time digesting it like more than usual and that struck me as kind of odd how difficult it was for you to to uh digest it so that i mean really if you think about what happened you kind of just you had celiac disease and you know gastroparesis like your body had you know tendencies there or you know whatever and you basically made yourself eat nothing but foods that triggered those right. things and that's it and that's the other thing is like you know when i made the moral choice to become a vegan i my vegetable intake went up insane and vegetables are like the number one no with gastroparesis so really I, high fiber. I literally went from a diet of consisting of all things that trigger two things I didn't know I had and it fucked me like I would literally wake up at like two or three in the morning dry heaving and I, I would like literally have to crawl to the toilet and then you know like just throwing up for hours every morning so then that was affecting my sleep and then like I was angry I was mad I didn't know you know what like before I got the diagnosis, like August and September, I was a bitch, you know? I said, like, I was being mean to people I cared about. I was, like, snapping at people. I was, you know, I was not being me, and I was aware of it, and I was trying so hard to not be that way, and I couldn't help it. And, um, you know, it, I was aware of it, and I was trying so hard. And maybe once I got the, di like, the first diagnosis, it was... It was like confusing because I like thought I had an answer, and then in my head it was like, okay, well I just stop eating wheat, and then I'm better. 
I wish it was that fucking easy. Like, I'm still so fucked up from it, despite getting diagnosed in September. And, you know, I haven't touched it. Or, but it's like, we still find it in this or that. Or, I, you know, like, I live with people who eat gluten or, or we eat out or stuff like that. And so... Um, it's really hard because it seems like right when I get the celiac disease thing figured out, something gets really fucked up with the gastroparesis, and then right when I get that figured out, something gets really fucked up with the celiac disease, and it, it feels like it's just like, I'm just going to call it lesson after lesson, because that's what it feels like. It, we're just learning from it, and, um, but it's just been really hard because what it's been doing to me up here, I just... Um, the reason I'm making this video is because I feel like if I don't, I just feel like everything I post anywhere, I feel like a fraud. I just, I'm a fucking mess, and I'm, I'm a mess at work a lot of the time, and I'm, you know, like, I'm really thankful that all of my best friends work for me, and they just let me be a mess. They let me cry. They let me be sad, and then they let me be happy five minutes later because I'm all over the place, and so... This is what I'm like most of the time right now. I, you know, every day there's a meltdown and I don't feel right continuing to be the person you guys all love me for being. If you guys don't know that this is also me right now because it's like a lot of pressure because I feel like it's my duty to help people. And I'm so hyper-focused on helping all of you. I'm not helping me. And I'm not taking care of myself. And I'm working too much. And you guys keep supporting me. You guys keep buying donuts and deadlifts. Hello, you guys keep donating to Reps for Recovery. And you, you know, you keep joining Black Eye in Nutrition and commenting on everything and showing your support. And it's it's the right thing to do to let you guys know that I'm not okay right now and um, mentally or physically and I had a really bad scare on Monday night Tuesday night um, and now we need to see a neurologist because it, we had something scary happen with my brain and we're not entirely sure what it was so um, we're assuming and hoping it's related to my physical health but what I've been doing <laughs> the past four months it's masking all of the health problems with work <laughs> um you know some people overtrain some people you know we all have our ways of dealing with things and my way of dealing with this is by working too much and it's weighing really heavily on me physically and mentally and all of them they have to you know they have to see this and you guys don't see this and um <laughs> I just, uh, it's the right, fair thing to do to let you guys know that I'm physically recovering very slowly because I'm still learning about both. Um, and I still am waiting on some answers and I just, I can't keep being this person on the internet when I don't feel like that most of the time. So even though I'm still going to be like that. I do want to show you guys what I'm going through right now and my recovery process with it because, um, you know, I do suffer from mental illness and I don't take it lightly. And, um, I, you know, I, me not taking myself, me not taking care of myself physically has been affecting my mental health. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just felt like it was the right thing to do to show you guys exactly what I went through and, where I'm at and um, yeah, I just, I really want to share my recovery process too. And I want to share, you know, what Rob's helped me do. And I want to keep you guys in the loop with everything that's going on because you, I know you guys care because you leave 2000 comments on the post I make about it. And that was enough for me to be like, wow, okay. Plenty of people give a shit, and it's all the people that are directly responsible for, you know, my livelihood. And um, I owe it to you guys to explain what is going on with me as you guys have continued to support me through all of this. So I really appreciate it. And this was kind of all over the place, and I, I don't, I hope it was worth a shit. I don't even remember what I said. I think you covered all the bases. 
I don't know. I mean, I just... we're we're definitely moving forward with it. It's just the the medical process is not the fastest, <laughs> you know. So pretty much as soon as we have answers, you guys will know. But what we know as of now, I think Chrissy's pretty much laid it all out there. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just it's just a process, and um, you know, I'm supposed to be on an all liquid diet that I try to stick to, but it's very hard. Um, but yeah, it's most of the time it's if I eat under 800 calories a day, I'm guaranteed I'm not throwing up, not getting sick. But then I might have to be hungry. So if I'm eating more than that, you know, I run the risk of getting nauseous because my stomach can't handle food. And the more I eat, the more at risk I am for cross-contamination. And Yeah, I mean, both, both of these conditions are, you know, they're lifelong and there's no immediate cure for either of them. You just have to learn how to deal with them and, and live with them. So it's been a huge learning process for both of them, which, I mean, we figured out that celiac disease was there first, so it took us, there was a big learning curve, you know, figuring stuff out there because there's so much hidden gluten in like everything, sauces. Everything. Like it's literally everywhere. <laughs> so it's it's like you have to turn on your, your like sixth and seventh gluten senses to like, you know, really get good at it. And then there's gastroparesis where there's like, you know, all sorts of triggers that cause your stomach not to empty. So. There's been a huge learning process for both of the conditions, and I feel like regardless of having one or two or how, however many of them you have, it kind of becomes a, a big balancing act. So this is a step in the right direction. This video is kind of what has needed to happen before I can move forward with anything I want to do in 2018. So um, yeah, if and when I get answers as to what could potentially be going on with my brain, I'll let you guys know. But in the meantime, um, there was a scare and we're still working on getting answers on that. So thanks for watching me. Blah, 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 blah. I am known for talking too much. I like it. I like listening to her talk. It's good. Glad someone does. Okay, bye. Bye.